I'm Melania and I'm an overeater in recovery and I'm weighing and measuring my food and I'm handing over to my sponsor, I'm writing it down and I'm not eating anything other than what I've written down and I'm not eating between meals and but I am drinking a nice kind of thing of Diet Coke. That seems to be my go-to. Um, and um, uh, yes, I, my abstinent date is um, June the 25th, 2021. So um, I was 90 days on Saturday after a reset. Thank you very much. Um, I came in originally at the beginning of lockdown um, because uh, uh, I, it was obvious that my eating was spiraling out of control. Um, and all the emotional, all of the emotional reasons that I would eat were ramped up with the anxiety of, of um, what was happening and the increased isolation because we were all um, in lockdown. And um, I had this moment of looking over a very steep slide. Um, I'd come to Gary Sheets before and uh, it feels to me that, gray, that the journey to Grey Sheets has been on a continuum. I got sober uh, in 2014 and three years after I was uh, three years in sobriety, I had one of those things that they promised where um, uh, uh, something out of the blue, um, uh, a, a promise came um, thundering across the horizon towards me. I'm a singer and a songwriter and also a choir leader and it didn't work out in my 20s and 30s because I was a roaring alcoholic at the time and um, then three years sober I got this invitation to go back on stage and play with some really fantastic singers and um, it was just extraordinary and it um, it threw up this terror of my body image and uh, I couldn't, the exposure and the vulnerability and how much energy I kept using to sustain the bravado, the good face, the, the jolly, rather loud personality, very creative, made everybody laugh, got everybody going. Um, but how much energy I used up in maintaining that and I just was terrified in a small intimate community of pretty aware women that that would be seen through and I wouldn't be able to sustain that mask. And um, so a friend of mine introduced me to GSA. And so I had my first round with it and got to eat the, 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 uh, the, the food. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, um, I, I feel that the journey has been on a, like a layer a layering, a layering where I have become more and more able to interpret um, the meanings of the of the Grey Sheet book and what people say and what the program is. Um, and I know now that I'm able to embrace and I'm willing to be open to um, levels and layers of of um, owning up and honesty that I never would have been able to have my pride and my ego and my rebellious um, would never have allowed me to tolerate that much um, letting go. So it's been very much for me a journey of, of working the program to the level that I could work it at that time. And then I came back again um, I never really left the eating because it was such a, it is such an amazing program and I did lose a lot of weight, but I didn't have the nuts and bolts of the program. Um, I just, um, um, like at, at the food. Um, and it wasn't until the, as I say, the beginning of lockdown, and I, it's it's an interesting, I'm staggering here, I'm stuttering, and I know I am, because I want to share something with you. Uh, I, these things, this serendipity happens, doesn't it? That I'm um, coming to um, 
share my journey with you and then i get a facebook you know the facebook do those memory things and you can I mean, they, especially if you haven't been on facebook for a while they'll bombard you with memories to try and seduce you back in um and this one was a photograph of me with my cousin in malta a year before i got sober so this is 2013 um and this is what I was. Um, and I had no real understanding of, um, of how much I was carrying, how much I was holding. Um, and look, I'm smoking and drinking as well. Um, so it was all just before that. And interestingly enough, my cousin, that's my cousin that I'm with, she's an artist in Malta and she's an alcoholic um, but um, um, we had a very bad I intervention um, and uh, which was a disaster but six months later I got sober so it was <laughs> so it was obviously meant to be but it was really interesting um, the context in which you know I, I drank in the music industry and so the level of my alcoholism, my drinking was measured by the context that I was in. And so, you know, I was drinking loads and if I'd been in a different situation, it would have been remarked on so much sooner. And, and I feel my eating and, and the weight that I've been carrying, it's the same thing. And it was fascinating. I showed that photograph to my band members yesterday and um, they all went, oh, but you look lovely. What a lovely smile. And you look gorgeous, you know. And I'm going there and I'm going, honest to God, I don't want anybody ever to say that to me ever again. You know, because it's just such a fucking, excuse my language, sorry. You'll have to edit that out. It's just such, it's just the lies we tell each other. <laughs> <laughs> to to and I know why you know and I'm really grateful for all those lives big lies because it did enable me sometimes just to get out the house and to put the smile on and once I got going then the persona took over and then I could forget you know that the, the, what I was holding in my body all the time but but it's this it's this it's kind of like an ena enabling I thought today that um uh, and and that codependency, my codependency on that, you know, I, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. When it's so obvious that I'm on that photograph that I'm not. And um, so, oh, I feel quite teary. Um, so I feel it's like this. It's this. It's this imagined self, this real self that sits inside me, that I'm making the journey towards her with this program this time and it is a, a the reset that I, I i was two weeks off being a year abstinent but i was lying and um i was kind of eight you know in my mind well i wasn't eating anything that wasn't abstinent so i was still in the frame um and then it got to a point where it just, uh, I was doing the steps and this, this combination of recognizing that I am an, an addict here with food and it's completely distorting the way that I see myself, the way that I can self-define who I am, the way that I can be in relationships with people, um, the, uh, to trust that I'm the kind of relationship I'm in it completely um, distorts all that. And it's taking me a, t a while to really let that, um, that the f I'm, I'm, I'm almost flooded by it. Um, and the, this, this weighing and measuring and, and the, the rhythm of the, clarity and the not eating in between you know it's like it it's like i'm building a structure for a house to find itself again and um so this knowing that I, this addiction was going out of control and then 
taking action on it and coming back and engaging with it and then doing the steps took me further along this road to, to myself and it came to a point where um, I, I knew I was being dishonest with my sponsor and it just became less... I've left, Mel. Thank I've you. left. Thank you. It became less and less tolerable for me to she giving me all this time and attention and and care and I wasn't telling the truth and so it was hard because you know words we can say words um, and and we can get away with it because people take us on those are the words people take us on the value of the words we're saying and um, and it was to, to it took me ages because I was scared to lose what I'd got and then I realized that well it, it what I got wasn't real it was like a um, fairy castle it wasn't a proper proper place and so um, and it was to, to you kind of the shame of it really isn't it you know of um, sneaking around the back and and um, lying i mean the, I'm, i keep coming back to that but the honesty of words this resonance that actually i what i say is true and i'm being honest and actually um not everybody's going to know but i know and that has resonated and it was tough losing the positions that I've got and the sense of it was keeping me in the herd and it was keeping me in the group and I was feeling like I was functioning and creating service and for that to go. But then um, it I just, when I was talking about these layers and levels and uh, since then I've just kind of gone down again into another level um, and it's quite breathtaking. It's taking my breath away when I feel that I'm I'm going truer, a truer course now, and um, God, I've got hope, you know. Uh, and and it's scary because I can feel how. It's altering, it's changing the way that I self-reference, the way that I'm thinking about myself. It's, um, I've never been as willing to, I, I've always been really judgmental and I, I know it's, you know, never been enough. And so I know it's a distorted way of um, not be not be tolerating feeling enough, so I have to make other people less and judge them. Um, but it's only my own judgments that I'm putting out on other people, and I've never felt so openly willing to learn as I am now, and that's ex incredible, uh, given my background. <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> um, so willingness I think acceptance all these words they're just taking on a new meaning um, and they're coming into my body it's like now the chemical balance in my body is shifting that the sugar is gone the grains have gone I'm calmer um, and I kind of you know it's a weird thing to say but i becoming a kind of truer resonator that I'll say a word like willingness and it will just resonate and I look down because I haven't got all this crap and I'm not um, and I'm not kind of lost in this codependent dysmorphia where body dysmorphia where I can't figure out where I am where where am I in all this and I am finding that one left I can see your face going towards that. So one minute. Um, so that's the list I've got. You know, the power of commitment, the power of 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 staying with something, 
and the length of the journey. I think that that each time I've come in or, you know, I've, I've um, reset the journey, I, I, I've come close to home. And it's like I almost dare, dare to dream that I can actually come through and be the person I always felt was inside there, um, uh, clearly and um, um, grounded and um, normal. So nobody ever has to say a compensatory kind but you look lovely, you've got such a lovely smile. You know, honest to God, I hope, pray to God that I'll never ever put myself back into that position where other people feel the need to save me. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you.